Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. As you might have guessed from my screen, I'm just back from a trip to Italy, and I thought, why not demonstrate some of the processing of the images that I took? And I also thought, let's kill two birds with one stone. I've been getting quite a few requests recently to take a look at the Luminaire software, before I went, I got myself a copy and I did some experimentation with it. And today I'm going to demonstrate processing this image that you see now with Luminaire 2018. Now the image you can see on screen is in Lightroom. It was shot with the Fujifilm X-T2 and I also used the 18 to 135 lens. Now that's not the sharpest lens by any means in Fuji's lineup, but it's a great travel lens. And to be honest with you, it was the only lens I used throughout my entire trip. So I've managed to get about 1200 images all shot with this lens. And do you know what? I'm actually quite pleased with the performance. Let's take a look at this image and you can see immediately that it looks overexposed. And the reason for that is I use a technique called exposing to the right. So I always shoot in raw format because that gives me more exposure latitude when I come to edit the image. But it also means that I can push the exposure higher. Now what I've done here is I've actually overexposed by about two thirds of a stop. That's actually made the image lighter, you can see from the histogram, so there's no blacks in there or very little pure black in there. But I'm also very careful that I've not gone to pure white and lost all the detail. And that's the trick when exposing to the right. So what you're doing is you're minimizing the dark shadows which tend to ca capture less detail and more noise and instead you're lightening them with greater exposure and then you can correct that in post-processing as we'll do now. Now the way I'm going to actually move the, the image into Luminaire is not using the usual right click and edit because if I do that Lightroom will convert the image first off into a TIFF file. And I don't want to do that, I want to maximise the quality. So I'm going to actually use the option up here in File and I'm going to use Plugin Extras and use the transfer to Luminaire there. Now what that does is it actually transfers the raw file over into Luminaire. Now you can see that on screen, I'll just move this so that you get the full image there. Before I start anything else, I'm actually going to go to this lens option up here under raw develop and I'm going to remove any lens distortion. Now in Luminaire, this seems to be really effective and I'm also going to remove the chromatic aberration as well. And I really like the results I'm getting with the lens profiles that it seems to have in there. Back to the raw profile, uh, sorry, the raw develop option and I'm going to now reduce my exposure down I'm going to increase my contrast slightly. I'm going to push the whites just a little bit because I don't want to remove any of that sparkle you get from having some specular highlights in there. And I'm going to actually move the highlight slider down as well. All I'm trying to do at the moment is create a well-balanced exposure for the image. And I'm going to add in just a little bit of clarity as well. And that's now looking quite good. I can though see that the image is also suffering from being a little bit too blue so I'm going to push the colour temperature up very slightly now and that looks about right. Now I'm not going to bother with any denoise because the Fuji is very good at handling noise at low ISO settings but I am going to come down to this Accent AI filter. Now I understand that this is some sort of artificial intelligence which understands the adjustments you need to apply to the image to improve it. So I'm going to use that and I'm just going to boost that filter there and you can see the difference if I turn it off and turn it on. There's actually it's not really making too much difference in this instance. The other adjustment I'm going to use is this dehaze option. And that's just to make sure the image is nice and clear as well. There's also quite a good remove colour cast and there's two auto options here. I'm just going to try those. Well that tends to remove quite a lot of the uh, warmth I've just added in with the colour temperature. We'll go to auto 2 and check that and that tends to be more of a warming rather than a cooling filter so I'll stick with that. I quite like that. Now the other option that I found really really useful is this advanced contrast adjustment and you can target the highlights, midtones, and shadows individually and you can actually 
once you've targeted the adjustment you can actually tend to balance it as to what it's what it's doing if I move the highlights to the left you'll see that it actually introduces some highlights but if I move it to the right it drags them more into the midtones and at the same time it's applying contrast now I'm going to actually move it to the left very slightly just to keep some of that brightness in the image that you get when you get direct sunlight next I'm going to move into the midtones and I'm going to move that over to the right because I want it to intensify the shadows very slightly and then we can look at the shadow adjustments if I move the balance to the left you'll see it opens up the shadow contrast if I move it to the right it darkens it and I'm quite happy with that but I'm realizing that I'm blowing the highlight just slightly or the whites so I'm going to actually use the reduction in both the highlights and the white sliders very sl slightly and also reduce that contrast level there and that is looking quite good we can if we want to just adjust further with the tone curve and um, maybe just going to add a little bit of exposure back in okay so that looks quite good one of the other options that I've got here is a polarizing filter and that also seems to work quite well and I can use that to darken the sky because of the blue in the clouds I like the overall effect I've got there I might just add in a little bit more clarity into the image and that appears to be doing quite a good job and you'll notice I've not had to touch any of the saturation or vibrance and yet there's a lot of detail and colour in there that really seem to be drawn out in the conversion the final thing I like to do is add a new adjustment layer and on this adjustment layer I'm going to add some filters and one of the filters is the sharpening filter because I want to make the image really stand out now so I'm going to zoom in and that's the image rendered at 100% it's already sharp without applying any sharpening but I'm going to apply a little bit more and it will really make it uh, jump out so I like to apply quite a lot of sharpening but reduce the radius down so that tends to sharpen fine details in the image I'm also going to reduce the masking because the masking is used to try to avoid sharpening noise in the image but there isn't very much at all if I was doing this with a little bit more time and care I'd probably mask out the sky uh, using some of the masking tools in here and just sharpen the building but that actually looks quite good as a starting point the other option that I want to include here is a vignette I'm going to zoom back out and I really quite like to create um, a darkening vignette on the image it gives a feel as a sort of a retro travel feel to it which I think suits the this subject so that's the image now corrected let's take a look at what we started with as you can see it's a substantial difference side by side it's very noticeable and we've ended up with a well balanced well exposed image that's got lots of detail in there and is good for submission now to a stock library overall I'm really impressed by the tools that I'm starting to see in Luminaire 2018 and I think I'm going to be doing quite a bit more work with this in the future I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next session